Mandy and I welcome you back to The Chosen's Blended Harmony of the Gospel. We are on Day 22, Part 2, Always Be Ready. We are in Luke 12, 35-48, talking about always be ready. Be ready for service and have your lamps lit. You are like people waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can open the door for him at once. Blessed will be the servants the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will get ready. Have them recline at the table, then come and serve them. If he comes in the middle of the night or even near dawn and finds them alert, blessed are those servants. But know this, if the homeowner had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have not let his house be broken into. You also be ready, because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Lord, Peter asked, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? The Lord said, Who then is the faithful and sensible manager? His master will put in charge of his household servants to give them their allotted food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom the master finds doing his job when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming and starts to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and get drunk. That servant's master will come on a day he does not expect him and at an hour he does not know. He will cut him into pieces and assign him a place with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his master's will and didn't prepare himself or do it will be severely beaten. But the one who did not know and did what deserved punishment will receive a light beating. From everyone who has been given much, much will be required. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, even more will be expected. A warning about the sign of the times. I came to bring fire on earth, and how I wish it were already set ablaze. But I have a baptism to undergo, and how it consumes me until it is finished. Do you think that I came here to bring peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, right away you say, A storm is coming, and so it does. And when the south wind is blowing, you say, It's going to be hot, and it is. Hypocrites! You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky, but why don't you know how to interpret this present time? Why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? As you are going with your adversary to the ruler, make an effort to settle with him on the way. Then he won't drag you before the judge. The judge hand you over to the bailiff, and the bailiff throw you into prison. That'd be bad news. I tell you, you will never get out of there until you have paid the last penny. Lots of great stuff in here. Let's go back and look at always be ready. He's talking about having your lamps lit and waiting for their master to come to return home from the wedding banquet so that when he knocks, the door can be open for him at once. And blessed are those servants that the master finds alert when he comes. So Jesus is just saying that we always need to be ready, right? Be ready for the end of the world, the end of the times, or be ready for the end of your life. Just always be ready, right? Always be doing what he wants you to be doing. And don't just be over here goofing off, you know, because when he returns, you want to be ready. Then I love this. If the homeowner had known at what time the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. That makes a lot of sense, right? You also be ready because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. And that's the tricky part, right, for some people because they don't really want to be leaving in God. They're like, I always have time. There will be time at the end. I can do a last minute believing, you know, but he's going to come like a thief in the night and you don't know. So my friend, you need to be ready. And if you don't know him, I pray today that you could. You know, it's so easy. It's like A, B, C, right? A, admit you're a sinner. B, believe that Jesus is God's son and that he died and rose for you, which was the payment for all sin. And then C, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. It's so simple to put your faith in Jesus. Then he said, Who is the faithful and sensible manager his master will put in charge of his household servants to give them the allotted food at the proper time? Blessed is the servant whom the master finds doing his job when he comes. 
So when Jesus comes back to this earth, are you going to be a faithful one? Are you going to be over here goofing off? Or are you going to be doing the task that he gave you? And you know, it doesn't matter what that task is. We all have different talents. Not all of us can be big preachers or, you know, famous singers that are going around, you know, all the Christian bands. I mean, we might just have small talents, but it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, you be faithful and I'm going to be faithful so that today, if Jesus would come back, he is going to find us being faithful, just hammering away in our little corner of the world, doing what he he gifted us to do. And then he's talking about signs of the times and how people think that he came to bring peace on earth, but no, he came to bring division. And he talked about how it will be divided in families, a father against a son, a son against father, mother against daughter, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law. And that seems kind of cruel, right? Like why would he bring division? But what he's just saying is that his message is just so different that it is going to divide people. But hopefully then we can turn the other people around and then I'll be on the same side, right? Be on God's side. But sometimes his message is hard to handle. And then he said to the crowds, you see a cloud rising in the West and you say a storm is coming, right? So they knew how to predict physical signs and when they saw with the weather. But then he's saying, you hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky, but why don't you know how to interpret this present time? So he's kind of chastising them. He's like, you have the Old Testament scriptures. You could be reading this and knowing what's coming, right? But they just don't. They just don't get it. But if I was back then, I probably wouldn't get it either. So, um, but I just hope today that you can realize that there are signs of the end times all around us. And that makes us even more eager for sure to make sure that we are saved and believe in Jesus and that your immediate family knows about Jesus. But once they're saved, you can reach out further to people all just around in your work, your neighborhood, wherever. And making sure they are saved because the end is coming and we want to be found working for Jesus and telling everyone we know about him. So I hope you know about him today. So I hope today you enjoyed reading about the signs of the end times and come back tomorrow for more harmony of the gospels from the chosen. We'll see you then. You can get your own copy of a blended harmony of the gospels by the chosen simply by going to thechosengifts.com. There you can find all kinds of wonderful merchandise to help build your faith this year. Be sure to check out their devotionals and their Bible studies. Have a blessed day.